the supermarket aisle feels familiar, yet something has fundamentally changed. When you pick up that carton of eggs or a loaf of bread, the price tag is a shock. You remember last year's receipt, and the difference is not just inflation, it's chasm. This personal cost is immediate, but the question is deeper. Let's put this in concrete terms. A dozen eggs that cost you $3 in early 2020 might now cost you $5 or even $6. That's not a gradual increase. That's nearly doubling in just a few years. These aren't luxury items. These are the basics, the foundation of household food security. And when these foundations become unstable, we need to ask why. Where do the operational costs end? And where do the profit margins truly begin? We are looking for the answer, not in the aisles, but in the balance sheets. This investigation requires us to think differently about the food system. We're conditioned to see it as a marketplace, a place where supply and demand naturally find equilibrium. But what if the market isn't as free as we've been led to believe? The conventional explanation points to usual suspects, energy prices, labor shortages, or a global event. But this narrative oversimplifies a crucial mechanism, invisible concentration. The food chain is not a simple line, it's a funnel. It starts wide with millions of farmers, but quickly narrows. The concentration we are interested in happens in the middle. Consider the numbers. In the United States alone, four companies control approximately 80% of beef processing. Three companies dominate the poultry market with similar concentration. In grain trading, just four multinational corporations handle over 70% of the global trade. This isn't a competitive landscape. This is an oligopoly at the level of seed production, specialized logistics, and national distribution. These are the pressure points where small cumulative price adjustments from a few dominant players translate into a, a significant non-competitive price at your local cash register. This is the disconnect, the perception of a free market versus the reality of a highly structured value chain. Let's trace a single product to understand this mechanism. Take a tomato. The farmer doesn't set the price for seeds. That's controlled by one of three major seed companies. At each stage, a small number of corporations hold pricing power. By the time that tomato reaches your shopping cart, it has passed through multiple bottlenecks, each one extracting value each one insulated from true competition. To move beyond theory, we must examine the public records. We analyze the financial reports of major food conglomerate A, B, and C, companies that control key segments of processing and distribution. These reports reveal a persistent trend following a major global crisis event such as the 2020 pandemic or subsequent conflicts. A clear pattern emerges while operating expenses did rise. Let's look at specific data points. One major meat processing corporation reported a profit margin increase from approximately 5% in 2019 to over 9% by 2022. That's nearly doubling their margin in three years. The question becomes unavoidable. If costs were truly the problem, how were profits not just maintained, but dramatically increased? The net profit margins for these corporations did not just recover. They demonstrably expanded this surge in margin directly following a period of supposed cost. Pressure suggests that price increases were not merely defensive. They were, in part, an effective and rapid strategy to consolidate and accelerate financial gains under the cover of market volatility. 
This is what economists call price leadership in concentrated markets. When a few dominant players control a sector, they don't need to ex explicitly collude. One raises prices, citing costs. The others follow, citing the same costs. The consumer has no alternative. The system functions exactly as designed, extracting maximum value at the point of least competition. We must be clear, the increase in external costs, specifically in energy and long-haul long transport, is real and has an impact. But this is the myth of the single cost. The idea that these factors alone explain the price explosion. When a major food conglomerate records record-breaking profits alongside a spike in the cost of diesel, it forces a, a question about the allocation of blame, the speed and scale at which these profits rose. Let's examine a real scenario. In 2022, diesel prices increased by approximately 50% compared to 2020 levels. Transportation represents roughly 6 to 8% of the final food price. Yet we saw food price increases of 15, 20, even 30% for many staples. The math doesn't add up. The cost narrative doesn't explain the profit reality, often outpacing the actual increase in their own operational costs indicates an opportunistic price strategy enabled by a lack of competitive pressure. The system is designed to absorb cost increases at the corporate level and amplify them for the consumer. This amplification effect is the key mechanism. A 5% increase in input costs becomes a 15% increase at retail. The difference? That's margin expansion. That's profit extraction. And it's only possible in markets where competition has been systematically eliminated through decades of consolidation. The personal shock at the grocery store is a symptom but the financial mechanism is complex and precedes the consumer. The real leverage in the food system is not held at the point of sale. It resides upstream. At the very beginning of the supply chain, in the intellectual property of essential agricultural inputs, this is where the cost control narrative truly begins. Understanding this upstream control is critical. A handful of corporations have gained control over the very building blocks of food production. Seeds, fertilizers, pesticides. This is only the first step of our investigation to follow the money trail to its source and understand how the control system functions at the elemental level. Subscribe now. Episode 2. The Seeds will dissect the hidden cost structure of the agricultural input market. In our next episode, we'll reveal how three companies control over 60% of the global seed market. We'll examine the patent systems that lock farmers into annual purchasing cycles. We'll trace the money from your grocery bill back to the very beginning, to the seed. It's the elemental level 